All right, so this is a remake of a video I did before, just to clarify a little bit more. So the schematic I'm using is this, and um, so probe one and <clears throat> probe two, these are the, the test points. So uh, this is uh, one of the primaries, and then we have two secondaries of the rodent coil that are connected in, uh, I guess, by filer fashion. Um, so they aid each other's magnetic field, not canceled out. Um, so there's two capacitors um, on each side, and then a string of LEDs. And that's this here. And there's our coil. So we're only uh, pulsing one primary, uh, and then two secondaries are being used in series. And basically we have uh, two primaries, both going in opposite directions to each other, the, the green wire, and the red wire is the same thing. Uh, the green wire has six turns, and the red wire has 20 turns. Um, both the one coil of green wire is equal to the same mass as one coil of red wire. So different number of turns, same mass. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the resonance and find resonant peaks with uh, an oscilloscope hooked up and uh, our signal generator. And our signal generator is set to uh, 10K multiplier and um, the function is a square wave. So if we, if we zoom out, um, we can see that it is a square wave uh, down at low frequencies. But since it's going through a capacitor, um, the capacitor starts to charge up during smaller frequencies, so it turns to kind of a sawtooth. And um, as we go out through the frequencies, you can see how the input amplitude changes and our secondary amplitude also changes with that, hitting resonant peaks. So right around here is uh, what I would call resonance. And um, <clears throat> when that hits resonance, we have uh, LEDs to, turn, uh, to tell us whether or not we're getting voltage out. Um, so if we go through, this is from zero hertz. And uh, see it has a couple resonant peaks. So I'm not sure if these are totally uh, harmonics, but this is the strongest one. And um, now we can take a look on our oscilloscope down at the bottom. So there's our square wave. You can see the secondary oscillate on the bottom. So this is our uh, input, and this is our square wave. Our square wave up top, and the secondary oscillation on the bottom. And we'll increase the frequency and the wave train as you can see starts to hit each other. So as that hits they constructively and deconstructively interfere resulting in uh, a resonance at continuous wave operation which is dependent on the ringing of the coil. So right around here we get our first resonant, our biggest resonant peak and that's at approximately 22 kilohertz. So <clears throat> now we can add capacitance and we can watch what happens to the LEDs when we do add capacitance as it takes the system out of resonance and to get it back into resonance, what we have to do is raise the frequency. And then we have resonance right there. And our frequency now is 26 kilohertz. <clears throat> so, 26 kilohertz, we have resonance. The interesting thing is that usually when you add capacitance to a coil, it lowers the resonant frequency. Um, this here actually increases it, so it's inverse of conventional coils, which kind of makes sense with uh, the geometry as it's pretty much wound as asymmetrical as possible. Um, <clears throat> the interesting thing is uh, how these LEDs do light up between these capacitors. You can also uh, kind of turn it on with your hand. 
Now, depending on uh, my capacitance, I also have a resonant frequency. You can see if you can dial that in with one hand. But uh, the cool thing is we can also have resonance with the earth. And uh, this here is just connected to this big old water pipe up there. We'll connect that across the capacitor. Then you can dial in on the resonant frequency with the earth. And um, you can still get it to light up. And you can see here. Uh, find the highest amplitude. It's interesting that we get a higher amplitude with uh, earth connected and a free end on the coil. And now we're at approximately 29 to 30 kilohertz. <clears throat> so the interesting thing also is uh, this coil has around 170 meters of wire on it on the secondary and usually with a conventional Tesla coil um, to get a resonant frequency of uh, 30 kilohertz um, a quarter wavelength would be a quarter of around 9,800 meters um, and this is nowhere near that amount so we basically get a resonance that's maybe dependent on the geometry of the coil um, but the fact that this thing will resonate uh, essentially with the environment at multiple frequencies dependent on the capacitance around it, it pretty much resonates with the area it occupies. So if there were to be a frequency that Earth is already resonating at and creating um, the same uh, impedance for that path to follow through by creating the same type of oscillation that's already present, you create a path from the ground into uh, essentially the sky or uh, the radiant energy that's always flowing. You create a path for it to flow into the earth. And with that, you get energy. So this, uh, this would technically be radiant energy. You can call it RF, but it's at 30 kilohertz. So it's not necessarily radiating into space. Um, we can test that later on with a spectrum analyzer and see what happens between continuous wave operation and damped wave oscillation. Um, we'll also test uh, pulse DC versus an AC input. So right now uh, our function generator is essentially giving an AC square wave since it's not grounded. So it's, it's floating and uh, we get AC between the ground and the coil so there's there's a there's a path of resistance here that is uh, interesting uh, the 30 kilohertz frequency is also uh, supposedly related to the Schumann resonance harmonics so this is radiant energy and uh, depending on the input we put in here we can raise the amount of voltage we can pull out and supposedly the better earth ground you have the better the circuit so I'm acting as a ground as well and my body is technically resonating at the same frequency so <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong but I would call this resonating with the earth and a vortex can do that at a frequency independent of wire length which is great for uh, anybody who knows the theory of Tesla's magnifier so you could you could get the same type of oscillation with a lot less wire so let me know what you think about that thanks for watching